How's it going folks? It's Rob here. One of the very frequently asked questions both Bianca and I get is how many veggies do we need to buy or um, can we live off just the vegetables we grow in the aquaponics and the soil beds behind me as well as a few beds out in the front yard. Uh, the short answer is no. Uh, we have had periods in time, especially last winter, um, the cool season crops by the way are the most productive for us here. Uh, we get a lot of things like brassicas through, the leafy greens, lettuce and that sort of thing, peas and also the pumpkins are pretty much all ripening around then. So the cool weather um, months, we generally have a really, really good harvest. This year has been a bit of a dub though. Uh, we had a few mishaps early on with some seedling starts I had in trays. Um, some didn't get watered when I was a bit crook. Uh, the girls looked after the rest of the patch, but not them, unfortunately. And the second lot I sowed out, I knocked the tray over and I lost the majority of the seedlings. I managed to um, save a couple of tomatoes that are planted out behind me and whatnot, but yeah, we lost a lot. Last year though, uh, we had a bumper crop, and the year before from memory, we had a bumper crop of the uh, brassicas, that's the cauliflower, broccoli, cabbages, and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, this year we've just been a little bit light on those crops. With the brassicas though, uh, we've had a couple of broccoli heads from the plants out in the front wicking beds. Uh, we've nipped them off as well as a couple of cauliflowers from around the patch. The bro both the broccoli and cauliflower this season though were started from seedlings because I had to play the catch-up game. Started from seedlings I bought from the hardware store. The broccoli, um, not as big as I'd normally expect the heads, but we did get a few nice ones off there. And the cauliflower, well, to tell you the truth, so far they've been fairly disappointing. We've had one decent head form on it. The rest of them have gone to bolt a little bit early, but then again, uh, it's been a little bit warmer than normal, so that may have something to do with it. Or it could be uh, the type of uh, cauliflower that their seedling provider grows. So. I'm not too sure on that one. Um, we do have some more out the front though, uh, some purple varieties that hopefully we'll be able to get uh, some decent heads off of coming on um, later on in the season. We've only got about a month left, so fingers are crossed and we'll see how they go. We've had some great Chinese or Wombok cabbage from the aquaponics, and we've also had a couple of nice ball cabbages from the wicking beds behind me here. Those guys were supposed to be the more conical sugarloaf cabbage, but there must have been a um, seed mix up at the seedling start place, unfortunately. Still, very tasty cabbage. I've also got a couple of the um, sugarloaf growing out the front. They should be able to handle the warmer weather a little bit better, so looking forward to a decent harvest from those guys. Some of the other plants that have done really well for us here, uh, one in particular was a volunteer pumpkin just growing in the bed behind me here. There's actually the vine's still going and we've still got a fruit on there, um, probably be ready to harvest probably in springtime by the look of it. That plant there has given us a load of pumpkins in autumn and also winter. I think we've harvested around about 11 all up and we've used them in all manner of things. Um, mashed pumpkin, used it in curry, vegetable slices. And yeah, it's a great all round plant pumpkin, I think. Uh, even the leaves are edible. I haven't tried any myself. Um, I keep on leaving it too late, but we've got some new green leaves on. We might have a crack at some soon. Um, you pretty much will just boil it up like spinach, so I've heard. The other seasonal crops we've harvested are uh, the ginger and the turmeric. The turmeric was actually in autumn, so it's not really a winter harvest crop. Uh, the ginger we pulled out this um, winter. We took it from both the aquaponics and a little wicking barrel behind me here. And we got an awesome harvest from those guys. I've processed some. They're pretty much all just little dry ginger chips at the moment. And as we want powder, we'll turn them into powder. And we've also got a lot in a basket that I keep meaning to turn into ginger paste. We've just been using it fresh as we need it, but um, I think I'll process some soon and I'll do a clip on that just showing you the two methods we use for preserving the ginger paste. Other seasonal crop uh, would be the water chestnuts from the little pond beside me here. Uh, that, that came out um, at the end of last month, I think it was. They're pretty easy to process. We just um, give them a bit of a scrub, peel them, slice them up and toss them into the freezer, thanks to a tip from Muggsy Jeff, or Jeff Harriet, I should say. So they're pretty much all looked after and we'll just pull them out for meals as we need them. We also have been eating a lot of spinach-like greens. We've been eating them like they're going out of fashion. We've actually got a fair few different varieties growing around the place. We have the Warrigal greens or New Zealand spinach. Um, there's some growing uh, just in the barrel at the end of this uh, bed here. It popped up as a volunteer and has put on a phenomenal amount of growth. So I nipped that off last night actually and used it in a vegetable slice. We've also got a bed dedicated to it down the back there. Um, we've got it popping up all over the place. It's a great 
little native plant that we can use as a spinach substitute, uh, substitute and it's very warm hardy so it's something we've been growing for a fair few years now. Uh, in the other beds you can probably see behind me here we have some rainbow chard or rainbow silver beet and we've also got a couple of plants up there in the aquaponics so we've been harvesting that as well as the perpetual spinach. Um, it's basically a chard as well but it's just been growing so phenomenally well in the aquaponics. I think if we got rid of the rainbow chard and the warrigal greens, probably half a dozen plants of that perpetual spinach would keep our family of four in spinach all year round. Uh, it's just growing phenomenally well at the moment, so I can't give it enough praise. Some of the ways I've been using the, the all the different chards and spinaches is by making up curries. I love a good green curry, a sag or a lentil spinach curry. I also too been making up um, pasta dishes with spinach. B makes a wicked creamy one with mushrooms and ham and Maya and I have been mucking around with a tomato one as well that we don't mind and also too made up some pesto the other night that was absolutely fantastic. Would also double as a um, nice spinach dip I think with a bit more basil and maybe some garlic added. We've had some awesome harvest from the Okinawan spinach. It's actually a native to Indonesia. It likes a warm temperature to pretty much all the tropical climate. Uh, we've been having phenomenal harvest of that this winter. Last winter it didn't do too well, but this winter it's just been flogging it along. Um, it got to the point where I invited people to come around and take cuttings. We had about 13 or 14 people come through and take a load of cuttings a couple of weeks back, so thanks folks. Uh, but it didn't put much of a dent in it and we've been harvesting it again, uh, along with the parsley from the aquaponics. Um, we've been taking out a load of that as well and we like to dice both or chop both of them up finely and add them into couscous salads along with some sun-dried tomatoes and um, shallots from the aquaponics as well. Makes up an awesome meal. As well as those greens from the aquaponics we've also been munching on a fair few of the beetroot leaves and some lettuce from over the back. Um, we've been using them up as we need them for salads and the um, celery. We actually pulled the whole plant of celery from the system. I did chop off a couple of leaves though and made up some celery salt and that turned out to be a nice little tasty herby condiment that we've been using on a few different dishes. Um, goes great on cauliflower soup and also roast spuds and mashed potatoes. So um, yeah, the aquaponics has just been flogging it along for us this season. I've been very impressed with how much it's been putting out during the winter cooler months here. A few other half decent harvests from around the place that have just been coming in in dribs and drabs, which is the way I like it, are the um, sugar snap or honey pod peas from the garden down the back. There's also some on a trellis beside me here and some out the front. We've been getting enough for a meal every couple of days. Um, also carrots, we've had a load of carrots. There's actually three lots on the go at the moment. So we've been picking them as we need them. Perpetual leeks are another plant that we've been harvesting a fair bit of lately. Uh, just pretty much all nipping them off when they're about as thick as my thumb. Uh, we find they divide fairly rapidly so we don't wait for them to get like the large leeks you see in the store. And we've been adding them in all sorts of curries and casseroles and also veggie slices and things like that. The lime tree's also been giving us a couple of limes every few weeks and we've just got a load of flowers on there and they'll stay on for the next season's crop. There's actually a load of little green limes forming so fingers across they'll all stick and we'll get a bit of a bumper harvest. We're also continuing to harvest things like the um, galangal and the lemongrass and the kaffir lime leaves just for curries whenever we feel like a bit of a Thai style curry. Um, but yeah, I suppose that's pretty much all it vegetable wise. We have had a couple of harvests of the jade perch through winter as well. So we've used some in fish curries and also just the traditional um, fish fingers and fish nuggets. I'm not too keen on fish myself, but the girls seem to love it. I must admit though, the jade perch curry, it tasted absolutely fantastic. Will be something I make up again in the near future. Um, yeah, I know it's a bit funny. I'm not a real big fish fan, even though I grow a lot, but you know, you get that. So as you can see, we are harvesting a fair bit from the patch, but by no means are we self-sufficient. I mean, we're still buying in tomatoes, onions, capsicums or sweet peppers, uh, potatoes, and I think we actually bought a head of broccoli the other week as well. Um, we had none on the go, then we'd already picked the bones out of the stuff out the front. So we, we do need to buy some veggies in. Uh, typically, I'd like to grow our larger tomatoes through winter here. It's when the fruit fly aren't around as much. Uh, we get smashed by the fruit fly here. It's a Queensland variety. Um, they lay maggots and all the fruit and that sort of thing. So um, when we grow the tomatoes, it's through winter and I lost all my seedlings early on, unfortunately. So no tomatoes this season. Um, as for how many meals a week, I'm 
pretty much well three to four meals a week I could say would be from homegrown produce uh, but you know we're still throwing in the odd potato or tomato or onion or something like that into the mix. Um, fingers crossed in the future we will get there but we're not there at this point in time. Um, so yeah I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a look at the harvest. So you may have noticed that I've changed my shirt a few times during filming. That's because I went out and splurged. I bought new clothes for a change, much to the delight of the girls. I'm normally an op shopper. I get most of my stuff secondhand through op shops. Uh, might as well recycle, I figure. Plus it's a lot cheaper than buying new. So I did splurge though, and I bought three new shirts from Root and Ramble. I got another aquaponics grow different because I lost my blue one. I can't find it. It's probably in one of the girls' rooms up the back of their closets. Um, also got a Thinker Grower Maker shirt and a Grow Loud shirt. I like the Grow Loud shirt. The guy's got an epic beard. So yeah, um, I'm not endorsed by um, Root and Ramble, just to let you know, they're not paying me to do this. I just think they're a fantastic design. They're a small company and yeah, show them the love if you like uh, the designs that they put on their shirts. There'll be a link in the description below. So. Thank you very much, Chris and the folks at Root and Ramble. So if you've enjoyed the clip and you haven't subscribed, you can do so by hitting that little subscribe button up there. And you'll be sent an email whenever we upload a clip to YouTube. And you can come along and say good day in the comment section below if you want. I do hope everyone is well and happy and that your gardens are booming. And I'll catch you next clip, folks. Cheers.